Hello, Father Larry here. This is chapter 15 now of the Screw Tape Letters, you know. There are 33 overall chapters, so we're getting close to the halfway point. All right, this, this chapter is very interesting. It's about time. And time is a very fascinating thing. All right, I think about it. Uh, people have been thinking about it since the dawn of time. And, and you think you know what it is until you start trying to explain what it is. Um, time. St. Augustine in his book, The Confessions, back in the 4th century, this doctor of the church, I think it's chapter 10, maybe chapter 11, but one of those two, uh, he reflects on time, and it's one of the most famous reflections, and it's very mysterious. Start with the past. The past doesn't exist. By definition, it's that which was and no longer is, okay? Uh but the future doesn't exist either because by definition it's that which is not yet. Okay. So what are you left with? The present. All right. Well, what's the present? It's in continuous flux. Okay. You know, you can try to pinpoint it, stop, you know, and, but you can't, you can't stop it. Okay. It, it, it's just like this moving flux. And it's like trying to pinpoint a number on a number line. It's kind of abstract at a certain point. Uh, you have to realize it's it's very abstract. A point is an abstraction. Uh, because if you try to pinpoint the present moment, you end up carving it up into a little bit of past and a little bit of future. Uh, St. Augustine finally just says, look, look, the present exists. We, Yeah, of course it exists. But he says it exists insofar as it tends towards non-existence. Whatever the heck that means. Okay. But this is the point of encounter with the living God, and Screwtape knows that. So above all, the devil wants to keep us from the present moment, which Lewis says is, um, you know, where we encounter God. The present is the point at which time touches eternity. Of the present moment and of it only, humans have an experience analogous to the experience which our enemy has of reality as a whole in it alone freedom and actuality are offered to them okay so the present moment we have to be present to the present moment if we're going to encounter the living god because he's here in the present moment with us so eternity and the present moment um that vertical dimension is where we must live um and the past and the future as they pertain to the present, are helpful. They can be helpful to us, uh, but we just can't give our heart to them, is what Screwtape says. You know, he says, God does not want men to give the future their hearts. Um, so we're concerned with these things, realizing very humbly uh, our limitations. Uh, we are concerned with them only as they bear upon the duties of our present state in life, okay, in the present moment. Now, the past can be helpful. Uh, the devil's not so much interested in it, which I find curious, you know. It's like, uh, it can be abused, sure. We can we can cry and wallow in self-pity and, and and hold on to hope for a better past. I know that's, that's meant to be funny. Uh, that's, that's a saying around 12-step recovery programs, you know. Uh, Holding, holding out hope for a better past. Like we can really do anything about it. Okay. Um, you know, in 12-step programs, they also say, <clears throat> you know, if you got one foot in the past, one foot in the future, you're pissing all over the present. Okay. It's kind of a vulgar way to put it, but it's true. That's exactly what the devil wants, to give our heart to the past and the future. Uh, we're concerned with them. Certainly we're concerned with the past. Uh, I like what C.S. Lewis says here about the past. His real knowledge of the past is kind of a determinate nature. Um, to that extent, it resembles eternity. You know, so uh, the devil's way more interested in the future, getting us to focus on the future. Um, <clears throat> doesn't care about the past that much, you know. But uh, for us Christians and Jews, uh, the past is very important. It's a historical religion, okay? Things that happen in saving events in human history that we fix ourselves on. Uh, that we get our bearings off of. For the Jews, it was the Exodus event. The great saving event for the Jews was the Exodus. And kind of picture them in a rowboat, you know, 
you get your bearings off that past event. Maybe you look over your shoulder once in a while, but largely you're facing the past. Uh, Christianity is no different. You know, for us, the great saving event is the new exodus, the coming of the Son of God into this world. Okay, his passion, death, resurrection, and ascension we call the Paschal Mystery. That's our fixed point. We keep that center of our stern. And then we look back once in a while. All right, so that's okay. That's good, actually. Um, I like that. But the uh, future is just murky. It's murky. We can't see very far. We torment and torture ourselves like this poor guy. Tortured fear or stupid confidence are both desirable states of mind for your patient. Okay? So keep him fixed on the future. Why? Because I love this uh, insight of Lewis here. He says, nearly all the vices are rooted in the future. Isn't that interesting? Whereas gratitude looks to the past and love to the present, fear, avarice, lust, and ambition look ahead. So, very interesting. The flesh, uh, the world, the devil, they want us looking towards the future. And this is a good insight, too, about creative evolution, you know? The very nature of this progressive mentality, this evolutionary mentality, that we're constantly improving, growing, uh, evolving. Okay, so the progressive mentality is fixated on the future. This kind of creative evolution or scientific humanism. Um, or communism, the ideals of a communist society are aimed towards some utopian future. It's really um, a dream. There's a certain faith element in it. Uh, striving for something which is never quite yet, never quite arrive at. You know, when I was in Hungary one time, I was in Budapest. I remember I was in college. And uh, up on top of this hill overlooking the city, there were these statues of these, you know, made during the communist uh, era. And it was like this ideal communist workers, a male and a female. And they were proud and strong. Um, and it was kind of like this symbol of some future utopian ideal. And then as we're driving through the city, I, I look over and see this little old lady. She looked like she was four, four and a half feet tall max. And she's hunched over and she's got her babushka on. And, and she's got these black boots and she's kind of shuffling along the sidewalk. She grew up under the communist era. Like that's the present. Like that's reality. Okay. Um, and there up on the hill, on the crest of this hill, overlooking it, these communist, communist ideals. I thought that was interesting. Uh, highlighted for me that, uh, that unreality, you know, um, ultimately, uh, this forward thinking communist future that never quite arrives. All right, look, um, the future is of all things the thing least like eternity. It is the most completely temporal part of time, for the past is frozen and no longer flows, and the present is all lit up with eternal rays. The future is like always out of, out of our grasp. We can't encounter God in the future. We can see God saving events in the past. There's value to that. Okay? Um, and in the present, we encounter the living God here and now, and we can look to his saving. But, you know, the future... This is a dangerous thing to focus on too much. Uh, that's why we, we got to be humble. So I want to turn to a couple Psalms here. Start with Psalm, uh, excuse me, Psalm 131. This is a great, fantastic little Psalm for dealing with anxiety. Oftentimes when people have a lot of anxiety, I tell them, pray with Psalm 131. It's only three verses. Memorize the blasted thing. Uh, listen to this. Oh, Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul like a child quieted at its mother's breast. Like a child that is quieted is my soul. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. See, there's a certain hope, I feel like, you know, I think the lack of anxiety, um, being 
A hopeful person is one who's contented in the present and is not con concerned, overly concerned or anxious about the future precisely because they have hope about the future. Okay, precisely because they know there's a God in heaven, on his throne in heaven, uh, over watching them and they're humble, humble enough to know that they're just a little child. And we don't raise our eyes too high or occupy ourselves with things too marvelous for us. Uh, too great and too marvelous, okay? And really, that's what we try to do on a regular basis, straining our eyes to see into the murky future, okay? Uh, it comes from pride. Yeah, it's pride which uh, really is beneath all that straining towards the future, you know? Prideful to lift our eyes too high, things too great and too marvelous for us. So let's look at another one. This is a, a great expression. We're all familiar with Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. Be still, okay? In the present moment. Raw fall. Hebrew word there. Uh... And it's a great word. It means like, you know, go slack, chill out, or relax. Or like people say nowadays, chillax. Okay, go limp. Cease striving. Calm down. Just be present in the moment. Like a green olive tree in the house of God. Psalm 52. That's one of my favorite prayer expressions lately. Images. Uh, just try that. Just filled with gratitude for your existence and just just rooted in the house of God in this beautiful, lovely courtyard. You're just a green olive tree, your whole being. Um, it just gives praise and glory to Almighty God and a great symbol of peace, the olive branch, okay? The olive, olive branch that the dove brought back in its beak to Noah's ark. Just think of that image of the olive tree, okay? They last a long time olive trees and hang around for sometimes thousands of years and uh so you're just this olive tree that's such a peaceful image in the house of god pray with that sometimes and raw fall okay be still um uh, vacate yourself that's 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 the word that saint jerome uses in the vulgate to vacate is to be empty vacate yourself you know like a vacation uh be still um uh, be empty Empty yourself in a certain sense of the past and the future and just be present in the moment. Certain humility in doing that. Certain humility in childlike abandonment, like that little child in Psalm 131 that's resting on its mother's lap. It's not thinking about the future and it's not obsessing about the past. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I love it. Green olive tree, raw fall. Uh, yeah, anyway. All right, now... Um, Anything else I want to say here? Um, I think that about does it, folks. So I hope you've enjoyed this. And until next time, God bless you.